All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, I hope I pronounce his name right. Um, running for uh, U.S. Con Congress, um, Callan Fretz. I did say it right. Kalen. Kalen. Well, hello. My name is Kalen Fretz, and I want to be your next congressman. My mission is to restore the Constitution and the spirit of freedom that made this country great. It's a big task, but if I wasn't up to it, I wouldn't be here today. I'm a Christian, a Virginia Tech graduate in computer science, an entrepreneur and business owner in the web development field for years, and I understand the effort and struggle to go into building businesses from the ground up. Of course, according to President Obama, I didn't build that, right? Now let's talk about Jeff Miller for a second. Your congressman is not promoting an agenda that helps you and it's time for this district's voters to make a change. Amen. It's too bad I only have three minutes because I can barely even list Jeff Miller's poor voting history in three minutes, much less expound upon it. He talks like a conservative, but over his last 10 years in Congress, he has voted for well over $5 trillion in new debt. He voted for more than $2 trillion last year alone. That's tens of thousands of dollars for every family here. And it will crush you and your progeny's ability to have a good life. There's nothing conservative in that. How about health care? Even when it comes to Obamacare, our congressman reiterates his intent to repeal and replace Obamacare. Replace it with what, you might ask? The answer is whatever version of government health care Jeff Miller wants. And the version of government health care that Jeff Miller has signed on to includes the pre-existing conditions mandate. The problem with medical care in this country are laws that prevent competition and drive costs up. This must be addressed as it's the reason that both federal and state governments are being threatened with fiscal collapse. Our congressman likes to portray himself as a defender of veterans, but massive spending like we've been talking about threatens veterans. It cannot be sustained. I sincerely ask the veterans in the audience, how many of you fought for massive debt, less freedoms, and endless war? So what's the big picture of what Jeff Miller does? Well, he voted for the NDAA, which allows President Obama to detain American citizens without due process. He continues to vote to allow the TSA to search your property and look at and even touch your naked body just as a condition of travel. He continues to vote to allow the government to spy on your communications via the, the Patriot Act. He voted for Planned Parenthood, Title X funding, No Child Left Behind, one of the largest federal... Uh, Department of Education expansions and failures in history. Does this sound like the America the, the Founding Fathers intended? Now for that matter, the Second Amendment clearly says the right to keep, keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. You have to get permission from no one, period. So you want someone who's really for gun rights? When I'm elected, one of the first things I will do is introduce a bill to preempt all state gun restrictions and restore the natural right of free people to carry openly and constitutionally. Government does not give rights and it cannot take them away. I ask you for your, your support. I ask you for your vote in November. Again, I'm Kalen Fretz. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kalen. Uh, you think it's hot out there. <laughs> Sit up or stand up here for just a few minutes. Now, if you would, please give your attention to Mr. William Drum. Evening, all. This is my first time running for office, um, running for con congressman from, for District 1. And Colin was right. The job that the Congress is doing right now is poor, and that's being polite. How many of you all out there have lost jobs, lost income? lost opportunities because of what the craziness that the current Congress is doing. No one listens to you. And when you try to try and file a complaint, they just give you the runaround. Now, why is that? They take and put things in place so that they can stay in office, that they can take and keep all of the privileges for themselves. How does that help you? Do you like the fact that they take and make it so that they can get all the tax breaks and not you? Do you like the fact that they take and make it so that 
they get all the opportunities and not you? What about your children? If you don't have income opportunities right now and you don't have the opportunities to excel and succeed right now, what's that going to leave for your children? Now, everyone takes and talks about the problems that are going on, uh, picking apart like what's going on in Colorado, what's going on in Washington, what's going on anywhere. What I'm asking you is to take a look inside yourself and see, are they representing you? Do they know what you yourself are going through? Have they been in your shoes? I've been 21, I've been married 21 years to my lovely wife Rhonda, and we've been raising an autistic son. Because of that, I've had to take in work out of the house, do side jobs, odd jobs, do anything that I can to make sure that my son can have opportunities that I didn't have. I was well on my way working toward that. What happened? The economy fell apart. All the checks and balances that were put in place on banks, all the checks and balances that were put in place on Wall Street, all the checks and balances that had been put in place to ensure your financial safety was ripped right out from underneath of it. Everyone. Who po prospered? Those who make the most money in this country. They prospered from your pain. Now, why in the world would you want to keep electing those people back into office that caused you those kinds of pains? It doesn't make any sense to keep sending the same people back there over and over again. These people that are up in Washington, the majority of them take and they, they earn millions of dollars a year. How many of you out here earn millions of dollars a year? Are they representative of you? Do they know the pain that you go through? What you have to deal with when you go shopping? What you have to deal with when you go to take and register to vote? Or register to get your driver's license? Or register to get anything for that matter? These people... Ah, I see my time is up. Anyway, I'm running this November as a writing candidate. I hope you'll keep me in mind. My name is William Cleve Drummond II. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Drummond. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you would, please give your attention to your Congressman, Jeff Miller. Thank you very much, George. Vicki and I are very pleased to be home tonight. And for those of you who have never been to Baghdad before, we welcome you uh, to one of the finest communities uh, in all of Santa Rosa County. You've actually come to one of the granddaddies of the political rallies around Santa Rosa County. been going on for a long period of time. And it gives us an opportunity to get out and visit with the folks who actually vote to put us in office, to give us a chance to talk about what we will do if we're running for office or what we have done uh, if we are currently serving in office. And let me just say uh, that as I came home from Washington yesterday and I look forward to the prospect of returning back to the battle on Monday morning, we are trying to do some things between now and the next election, which is very important to all of us. I think we all understand, we say it many, many times, that this election is the most important election. That election is the most important. This one is, in fact, the most important election this country has seen probably in century. Because the President of the United States has been taking us in a direction that you or I don't want to go has been putting crippling sanctions, crippling regulations on top of our small business people in America. One of the things that we're going to be focused on this week in Washington is the fact that there is so much red tape uh, that an individual that's trying to start a business or keep a business open today just can't do it. They can't hire people. We talk about not being able to get jobs for people. It's not the federal government's responsibility to create the jobs. It's the federal government's responsibility to create a climate where people have the ability to expand their company to hire new people if they can. Now, our Constitution also says that we are supposed to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. And that's exactly what I've done as a member of the United States Congress. Since that September 11th, all of us have focused on making sure that each and every one of us in this country are safe from those who would choose to do us harm. Those decisions that we have had to make in Washington have not been easy ones, but we have done it together and this country is safer because of it. I appreciate each and every one of you coming out here tonight to listen to all of the candidates, no matter if it's the United States Congress or somebody running for soil and water. That is our responsibility and duty as Americans, is to elect those that are going to represent us. I visit with people from around the world 
that can't understand the open society that we have, how easy it is for people to come in and talk to their elected officials. That's what our founding fathers wanted. The founding fathers wanted those of us that go to Washington and serve you in the House of Representatives to run every two years, to have the opportunity to visit with those, to tell us the decisions that you want us to make. So with that, I say thank you for the honor and responsibility to serve you in the United States Congress, and I ask for your vote in November. Thank you, Congressman Miller. And there you go. There's your applause, gentlemen. And we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Y'all have a good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, if you